During World War II, the US Navy had a problem. They were losing bomber planes to enemy fire at an unsustainable rate. Something had to be done to reinforce the armor of these important war assets. So the Navy began studying the planes which returned from combat. Initially, they planned to reinforce the areas of the plane which had been hit the worst by enemy fire, until a statistician by the name of Abraham Wald observed that the Navy should in fact do the opposite. His conclusion was counterintuitive. The bullet holes in the returning aircraft represented areas where a bomber could take damage and still fly well enough to return safely to base. Wald proposed that the Navy reinforce areas of the plane which had not been damaged in the returning aircraft. He realized that the fact that those surviving aircraft were not damaged in certain areas inferred that the ones which did not make it home were probably hit where the surviving aircraft weren't, and it was these areas of the plane which were most vulnerable. His suggestion did in fact improve the survivability of US bombers, and his work is often touted as a great example of the dangers of survivorship bias in statistical analysis. What does all this war stuff have to do with trading and investing? Well, there are several situations where survivorship bias can creep into our trading process and contaminate our trading strategy research and development. The most obvious form of survivorship bias in trading is on the stock market. Many traders like to develop systems to trade universes of stocks, such as the S&P 500 for example. The S&P 500 is an index of stocks which includes 500 of the largest companies whose stocks are listed on the major United States stock exchanges. The members of this index change on a quarterly basis. So for example, if you were to backtest the system on TradingView based on the current members of the S&P 500, you'd be falling victim to survivorship bias. This is because TradingView do not list any stocks which are untradable. So by definition, they exclude the charting capabilities of any stock which did not survive until today. The danger of excluding these delisted stocks in your backtesting is that your system is going to have artificially high returns and unrealistically low drawdowns. This is because these stocks which could have resulted in major losses for the system in the past were excluded in the backtest. Survivorship bias is also rampant in financial media. The other day my own dad came to me with an article saying something like, if you'd invested $1,000 in Tesla's IPO, you'd be a multi-millionaire today. Which might be true, but you didn't and you ignored the hundreds of other promising stocks which you might have invested in at the time. This kind of shoulda, woulda, coulda analysis of past stocks is popular with rookie traders in financial journalism. If you knew next week's lottery ticket winners, you'd be a millionaire too. So anyway, what does all this mean for you as a trader? The key takeaway is to be sure you're using the right tool for the job when it comes to system development. I have a lot of traders who follow my channel. We have Forex and crypto traders, stock traders, futures and commodity traders and so on. Each of these trading specializations have different concerns to address. For example, as I said, TradingView does not list stocks on their charting platform which no longer trade. Any companies which have gone bankrupt or merged with other companies in the past are no longer testable on that platform. So if you're backtesting a system based on a basket of stocks included in a dynamic index like the S&P 500 or NASDAQ 100 or so on, then you are much better off using a more advanced portfolio-based backtesting software like Amy Broker or Realtest or some other comparable tool. If you're interested in learning more about portfolio-based backtesting for stocks, check out my free real test video tutorials on my channel. They'll be linked below in the video description. If you're trading Forex or commodities, then a platform like TradingView is probably perfectly fine for backtesting because it's not very often that a currency or a precious metal goes out of business. Likewise, if you're trading cryptocurrencies, assuming you're sticking to the major assets by market cap like Bitcoin and Ethereum and other coins which have been around since the birth of crypto, then you're probably not being affected by survivorship bias. But if you trade small cap altcoins and you're only testing your system on the currently listed coins, you are probably in for a bad experience if you ever trade that system live. This is because your backtest data does not account for the thousands of altcoins which have gone to zero over the years, which means it doesn't simulate the current coins headed to zero, which you will inevitably end up invested in at some point. Now, if you're an intraday trader, then backtesting on TradingView using PineScript is probably fine too, as long as you test across a large sample of historical data and various market conditions and don't just stick to a single asset. Single asset systems tend to be curve fitted, so having a large sample of assets in your backtest sample can help avoid that. And delisting is not so much of an issue with intraday systems because of the granularity of the time frame and the nature of an intraday trader's selectivity. The broader your intraday trading is in terms of strategies or setups and assets you trade, the less and less survivorship bias becomes a concern. Some other things to consider when going through the strategy research and development process is strategies themselves. If we only ever focus on systems which generate a profit and ignore ones which didn't, we're not going to learn the weaknesses which certain systems can exhibit. 
If we only ever focus on winning trades or winning systems and we never analyze our losing trades or systems which broke in the past, then we're opening the door for getting blindsided by situations we don't account for in our testing. We're also hamstringing ourselves creatively because analyzing losing trades and broken systems can often lead to discoveries in ways to improve future systems. For example, if a trading system imploded during the 2008 global financial crisis or dot-com bubble or the several crypto bubble bursts we've seen in recent years, then studying what caused its catastrophic losses or drawdown could lead to potential defenses against those weaknesses in the future. A great example of this is regime or market index filters. I employ regime filters in nearly every long-term system which either holds positions for a long period of time or trades long only. If you don't know what a regime filter is, there's a link to a video I made about them in the video description below. Essentially, this defensive market filter keeps my trading systems out of major bear markets and dramatically improves the profitability of certain systems which might otherwise be undesirable to trade. And the discovery of this tool's effectiveness was based on research done throughout the major bear markets in history and from analyzing what caused long-term systems to suffer their worst drawdowns. There are plenty of other examples of survivorship bias, too many to list in this video, but here are a few that come to mind which you should be aware of and should try to avoid. Only testing during specific market conditions, for example, testing trend following systems only during trending markets or mean reversion systems during low volatility, discarding underperforming systems without first understanding why they failed, overfitting to historical winners, which makes your system less robust and resilient to future changes in market characteristics, only backtesting on the historical outperformers like FANG stocks or Tesla or gold or Bitcoin, just because they did well until today, but ignoring any similar assets which did not do well. This is a form of recency bias, which is similar to survivorship bias. Assuming perfect fills with no slippage during your backtest, this will result in unrealistically high simulator returns. And a final one which comes to mind is ignoring commission drag on a system. If you don't know what that is, I have an entire video on that linked below in the video description. And finally, here are a few tips for avoiding survivorship bias. Always test on broad market conditions, bullish, bearish, sideways consolidation, market crashes, etc. Test on broad assets. So avoid single market systems or small baskets of assets. If you trade Forex, for example, try to test your system on all the major and minor pairs. You don't need to trade them all or expect all of them to be profitable. But if your system only works on a single currency, it's probably curve fitted and an unstable system, which is likely to fail in the near future. Always simulate real slippage and commission costs as best as possible, and always use high quality data, especially with stocks. So for example, Norgate data or others, there are other services which include historical constituents and delisted stocks. That's very important for stock traders. And the best general advice I can give is to train yourself to think outside of the box. Don't try to prove your system works. Try to figure out what you might have overlooked. If you do this and your system's performance metrics are still reasonable, you're probably onto something which is pretty solid and robust. Good luck with your trading survivors.